Hi everyone, I have some great news. I figured out how to get rid of the background sound on my computer desktop camera thing. Now you may have noticed if you have stuck around that each of my videos looks and sounds a bit different and that's because I am hopping between a 2008 camera, my phone and my desktop camera to see which actually produces the best effect. Actually, I'd say it was the camera, but for some reason it won't allow me to store any footage on it because it says that there's not enough space. So, therefore, I am reduced to this. So, if any of you have any advice, it would be greatly appreciated because in this current quarantine, obviously, it's not like I can splurge money on a huge camera set or a huge microphone set. No, I've got to rely on inbuilt things and things I already have. Anyway, I actually made a um, video on my phone last night. Um, a review on the book The Outsider by Albert Camus. Unfortunately, because that was on my phone, it wouldn't allow me to edit and thus wouldn't allow me to, no, it allowed me to edit but wouldn't allow me to save and you kind of need that if you are going to be putting it online. So yes, I am now resigned to this and I am not doing Yes, yeah, quite it because I am a coward and I gave up because I tried five different times and I don't really want to refilm it because it wasn't that great a video anyway. Anyway, so instead what I'm going to do is review Lady Audley's Secret. It's a classic in my definition of a classic. It's just an old book and a lot. Um, I probably have said that I have recently started to get into them. By the way, yes, I am wearing a dress shirt thing. Anyway, so, this is Lady Audley's Secret by Marianne Braddon. And most of the books that I have, I have just found in, like, my mum's shelf and things and I go, oh, interesting, it is, it's not a lot to do right now, if you haven't noticed. This book, it was written in 1862 by, as mentioned, Mary Elizabeth Braddon, so, a female writer, which is always pretty nice to hear about. It, she was a contemporary of the author Wilkie Collins. And he wrote The Woman in White, I believe. Yes, and he is quite well known. He was a good friend of hers as well and helped her a lot. She's really interesting. I think that actually when coming into this book, it actually helps to have some background of the author. So for for the people who don't know, Mary Elizabeth Braddon, she was born in the 1830s, 1835 I believe, and her mother and her father separated when she was 13. Her mother moved to Camberwell, a suburb of London, and they owned a boarding house. And so she was raised by a single mother. And she went into acting actually as her way of putting food on the table for her family, which is quite interesting because at the time it wasn't viewed as proper for a middle class woman to enter acting. It was, I don't think it was quite viewed as prostitution anymore, but it wasn't, it wasn't like it was today where you had superstars who were viewed practically on the level of politicians like yeah Oprah would never have run for president I don't know I don't know what I'm talking about anyway 
So she did what was usually done in the time, because obviously this is before television, so it was all stage. But also, rich people would actually pay for actors to do private showings. And so she did a bit of that. But it was really quite proper because her mother assisted her and went everywhere with her. So, she, so it was never anything, like, scandalous. But in the 1860s, when she must have been about 30, I'm not going to dwell on the math because it'll give me a panic attack. I have heard that she decided to, she decided to actually turn to writing as her means of as her means of financial support. Which is quite interesting because you you always hear like, ah, oh, don't become a writer. Da, 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 da. So it was quite a risky gamble. She, um, so she must have quit her job at some point. She'd been writing since about the age of eight and she wrote like Byronic poems and that's sort of thing, that's sort of kind of thing. But it was actually mainly an economic thing for her. It wasn't, it wasn't like she was some starving artist who did it in spite of their situation. No, she did it to actually lift herself up. And her first two novels were released in a form of serials, S-E-R-I-A-L. Yes. Um, serial killers? No. A serial at the time was a book that was released over a number of editions in like journals and things. And she had put hers in, I believe, I can't remember which journal it was, but she actually originally stopped writing Lady Order's Secret and then people really wanted her to write it. And people were like, hooked. And so it's really interesting because I've been in the process of reading things like Frankenstein and Henry James and that sort of thing. And most of their work is pretty slow paced. But it's really interesting because Lady Audley's Secret isn't. It still has an, a lot of the parts of sort of older fiction. It's, it's very description based. It is so, so descriptive. The writing is beautiful, but it still has that element of like a modern thriller because, I mean, from the title you want to know what Lordy, Lady Audley's secret is. Yeah, um, Mary Elizabeth Braddon, she actually ended up marrying her publisher and she ended up being a real economic powerhouse. She actually, because he had multiple different journals that were targeted at different demographics. So you had them for the middle class, for the upper middle class, and then also for people who were just part of the working class. I don't know if I've already mentioned that. Yeah. Um, and she would adjust her writing style and her writing method accordingly. So I find that really interesting. But anyway, yeah, so she also was in a relationship with this guy while he had a wife who was locked away in an asylum somewhere. So yes. but this was, but, but this would happen after she'd written Lady Willie's Secret. Anyway. What, I bet you're wondering, is Lady Audley's secret about? Stop hammering on about random things that no one cares about. I like learning about the authors, I'm sorry. Um, it, it was part of a new era of books called sensation fiction and like authors like Henry James. I guess you could think of it as the times equivalent to genre fiction. So like genre fiction is like, you've got a defined thing and it's 
like action books and the sort of books that you pick up the, at the airport. They're generally not lifted up as high as some non-genre specific books and they're not considered high literature. I could have gone on for a whole lot in another video if any of you were interested. It is, it's a story of a young woman, a beautiful young woman called Lady Audley, um, who becomes the wife of a man about 30 years her senior. And then it also coincides with the suspected murder of a man called George Talboys, and then his very unambitious cousin, no, his very unambitious friend trying to uncover the truth. I found it fascinating because it was very sympathetic to the villain, especially for its time, because it's of a woman. The villain is a woman who is incredibly beautiful, and I find it quite interesting because, you know, so often we're fed the tales of the evil stepmother who is endlessly beautiful and jealous of anyone else. This actually really tackles the concepts and the struggles of poverty and it makes a really interesting argument, I believe, that poverty really prevents people from, or it prevents this main character from the kindness that they might otherwise have because you don't have time to think about being a kind person when you are just trying to think about getting food on the table for the next day. You can't dwell on those things. And of course, some people, well, many people are, I don't know, most people are. Um, but, I mean, think about addiction. Think about poverty and homelessness. I, I don't know. I, it was just, it's really fascinating to read a book so sympathetic to what is essentially a gold digger and even today the gold digger is viewed with a lot of scorn and that could be debated but she's almost like the OG gold digger she's so cool she's so beautiful she's so enrapturing and I find it really really fascinating I I love the writing style. It, it draws you in right away from the description of this place. It's just like a bric-a-brac -brac of different eras just squashed into one massive building. Um, yeah. I really will avoid any sort of spoilers because I think this is definitely a must-read, especially for people who are maybe like not really sure where to go with classics because all the ones that you've been recommended are written by these old straight white men who are like just going on for 50 pages about the Paris sewer system. This isn't like that and I think that it's really refreshing because I actually couldn't put it down wasn't like a one sitting book but that was only because I just wanted to spend more time with it. It's an incredible book with incredible imagery by from the author and I believe that if you are wanting to get into this sort of classic literature sort of thing I believe this is a must read. Anyway, that's my review for today. I'm sorry that you're not getting the outside now. You might get it in a fortnight, a month, who knows? Okay. I hope you've all had a wonderful time watching this and I hope you all have a lovely evening. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if this sort of content appeals to you. And if you have any advice, feel free to leave it in the comments. But yeah, 